Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be the next episode of my Makeup Dilemmas series where I try to help you with any of your makeup struggles, your challenges, share tips and try to just help you out with any issues you're having with your makeup. So if that sounds good, then keep watching. So if you want to know, by the way, how to submit a question for Makeup Dilemmas, every few weeks or so I will put a question box in my Instagram stories and you can submit your questions that you have or anything you want my help with. It just helps me to answer as many questions as possible because I can't always answer every message and comment that I have. It's just too, there's just too many but I like to answer as many as I can in these videos so that you guys can also hear each other's issues and we can all help each other out. And maybe there's something in here that you've been struggling with and someone else has asked it. And it's just a way to get a lot more help and tips and tricks in one place to share with you all. So thank you so much if you sent in a makeup dilemma. Hopefully I will answer as many as I can. If I didn't answer yours this time, it's most likely, it's almost guaranteed to be because we've answered that in a previous episode so I will put my makeup dilemmas playlist down below you can see like what questions we cover in the thumbnail so yeah it's very likely if you ask a question about concealer about concealer creasing about mascara transferring for example we have already answered all of those in previous episodes but everybody else I will try my best to answer every question that I got okay so Lyseld says I cannot wear mascara at all my eyes water too much any other tips to enhance the eyes so here's the thing if you for whatever reason you've never found a mascara I'm assuming you've already tried like waterproof mascaras you've tried mascaras for sensitive eyes if you haven't then give that a go but I'm assuming it sounds like you've been trying everything so a few things to try one there's lots of like treatments that you can get for your lashes you can have them lifted you can have them tinted you could try curling your lashes if those are a bit too scary for you but there's lots of treatments you could also try a lash lash serum uh, to get your natural lashes longer and thicker as well so there are things to try give those things a try give those a tip I would definitely recommend tinting eyelashes I haven't had mine done but I've seen incredible results just from like tinting and getting an eyelash lift that will really help and obviously it's not going to be having something you have to do every day and it's not going to cause you sensitivity each day when you're putting mascara on so those might be some things to try next up self claire five says for eyebrows is it better to go lighter or darker if you can't find your exact shade like when it comes to eyebrow pencil i'm assuming that's what we're talking about so for me i mean do what you want do what makes you feel happy i would always go darker it's going to be very hard for eyebrow pencil that is lighter than your hair to show up on your skin tone and to show as like hair strokes it's just not likely to show up when i've gone for a pencil and it's too light for me it just doesn't work it just doesn't show up it just doesn't give me the effect you can use a deeper pencil and you can use a light hand but typically you know i brush through once i've done my eyebrow pencil and it really makes it really nice and soft and natural so i would always go darker i you know have my brows i haven't got anything on my brows today because i just had them laminated they're very fresh freshly tinted freshly laminated but i always like my brows a bit darker than my hair anyway but yeah I would always go darker it's just going to be easier to show up and the last thing you want to do is be adding a lot of brow pencil you want to stay light you know just placing a little where you have gaps and a little where you need it and if you're using a pencil that's too light you're going to have to do a lot more work basically to get it to show up I would always go darker. Kylie says what's up with eyeshadows not deemed safe slash intended for use on the eyes for example the ABH Nouveau so I've seen a lot of people talking about this a lot of people very confused obviously and alarmed probably unnecessarily I would say about this not safe for eye area and thinking what on earth is happening why would there be not safe for the eye area products in an eyeshadow palette I hear you say of course that seems crazy so my understanding of this having seen lots of people talking about this over the years who know a lot more than I do about formulations and ingredients this is like an American issue so apparently it's is it the FDA I think it's the FDA who control like ingredients and laws and regulations around cosmetics in the US they basically have decided they don't approve like certain 
pigments for use on the eye area. And the reason they don't approve them for use in the eye area is because they can stain. That's typically it. So they don't always, and they won't always on everybody. I've never had an eyeshadow stain, and I use all of these pressed pigment palettes. Never had an eyeshadow stain. For some people, it can stain your skin. I mean, not forever but like it, it just doesn't easily come off. It could be there for a few days, I think is what we're talking about here. So for that reason, the FDA won't approve these pigments for use in the eye area because I guess in theory, there is like a side effect to using them in that area. So they won't approve it. The rest of the world, as far as my understanding in the EU, they are approved for use in the eye area. So we don't necessarily get those warnings on our eyeshadow palettes here unless they're like made or the packaging is made in the US in which case we'll still get the warning but in the EU and in the UK now that we're not the same they are approved for use in the eye area and a lot of other countries too so it's literally seems to be like in the US the FDA just won't approve these pigments because of staining so I don't think it's really anything to be alarmed about for most people it's not like you're going to go blind they're not saying that if you get it in your eye you'll never see again it's not that level of extreme but yeah I understand the confusion, it's got very strange. But most people just ignore it, use it, and don't have any problems. Reem Nashi, do you use an eyelash curler before or after you apply mascara? Please, for the love of God, use it before, before mascara. I've seen people, and I know some people use an eyelash curler after mascara, but here's the thing. Before you put mascara on your lashes, your lashes are like soft, you know, bendy, flexible hairs, okay? So, you know, you use an eyelash curler and it lifts them and then you apply your mascara and the idea is the mascara will hold the curl. If you apply mascara to your lashes, you'll know, you know, you feel your lashes when they've got mascara on. They feel hard, they feel brittle, and they're not as flexible as like your natural hair before mascara. So using an eyelash curler on mascara'd eyelashes is very likely to cause damage or heaven forbid breakage snappage to your natural lashes because it's a hard stiff material now and by putting basically clamp on it and squeezing it it's very likely to snap them off okay i've seen it happen numerous times they can also stick to the eyelash curler because that you know mascara it, if you're pressing on it, it can still be a little sticky, a little tacky. It can stick to the eyelash curler and you can rip them out. Please, for the love of God, only use eyelash curlers before mascara. It's not worth the risk. Who wants a bald eye, you know? Lee Foster says, I can never get makeup to stay on the bottom left side of my face. This is a mystery. This requires some detective skills. I wonder, my first thought is, you're saying, that's a very specific place. It's not like you're saying, you know, my T-zone, my forehead, or, you know, the nose. The bottom left side of your face, here's my, here's my immediate thought here, Lee. Are you... Are you doing that? Are you? Are you doing it without knowing you're doing it? Are you not, are you doing it without thinking about it? Are you... Are you doing something like that? Think about it. That's my, my best guess. Kylie asks, what are my thoughts on Westman Atelier? Would you try and review in future or does it not appeal? So I have tried Westman Atelier. I have tried a couple of products from the brand. Um, they they do appeal to me. There's, there's a few reasons why I don't do more Westman Atelier on my channel. One, they are a brand who don't bring everything here. There was a new shade of their highlighter that I really wanted and was desperate to get, but it was like a, I think it was, was it a Nordstrom exclusive or a Sephora exclusive? We never got it here. It never arrived, which was crushing because I really wanted it and I would have absolutely bought that. There are products that don't arrive here from the brand. We have Westman Atelier stockists, but they don't get everything and they don't get everything very quickly. By the time it gets here, it's like we've all moved on to new products. So that's why I don't review more. It's not because I'm not interested in the brand. I am. It's just a tricky little number. They come here late. Often we don't get everything. Sometimes we don't get their products. So yeah, it's not intentional. I'm not, you know, haven't cancelled them or anything. I'm just, yeah, that there are few and far between opportunities for me to review products that I'm interested in from, from that brand. Rachel says that pinky blush oxidizes orange on me. Here's the thing, 
any like cheek product, any product that's going onto our skin. I mean, eyeshadow as well, any makeup product, essentially lips too, okay? We get it, we get it Charlotte, every makeup product. How it looks on your skin color wise is gonna be completely dependent on your skin tone and your undertones. And you know, that is a common issue. A lot of people, for example, Charlotte Tilbury, everything in her line leans quite warm and typically leans peachy, orange tone. So if that doesn't work for your skin tone, lots of people just like hate the brand because everything is overly warm or overly orange on them because of their natural skin tone and undertones. Whereas on me, I, those tones really suit me and I love them. So that's why I love the brand because everything just works and everything looks good on me because those shades work with my skin tone and my undertones. So that is just how your, your skin, your skin tone, your skin undertones are working unfortunately. So it may be that, you know, pinky blush is not the one for you. Maybe try some different colors, work with some different shades and see. You can use, you know, color correctors to cancel out really strong undertones, but you know, something to play around with maybe, you know, color correctors to see if that can balances out. If you've got a really strong undertone that is throwing things off, but you know, not everything works for all of us. There are definitely shades for, that don't work for me. Okay lots of them. Okay, Beauty Extrovert has a really long message. So she, there's like 15 boxes here. This is again, another detective investigation needs to be launched here. So she says, I use highlighter, blush, bronzer, sometimes also contour. Either way, I feel like I'm cramming everything above my cheekbone and then from my cheekbone to my jawline is this complete blank space. I blend everything but I feel like basically everything is going on up here and there's just like nothing down here and it looks off. So you didn't say like what your sort of face shape is. Now I have like basically a slightly long oval face shape. Now you can see like my, so my contour, your contour is essentially should go on most people from like the top of your ear to your lip line. That's kind of like where you're putting like your contour to get under my cheekbone, that would be about here. So that leaves me really very little space left at the bottom. You know, today I've got blush and bronzer on and everything kind of stops about here and I've literally only got this tiny bit of space. So everything on, on me and how I do my makeup, I'm happy with it, I, I think that works for me. However, if you had a really long face shape or if you just have a really high cheekbone and therefore, you know, if you place everything under your cheekbone, it would be up higher and then you would have have more space here. Everyone's face shape, size, structure is completely different. So it could be if that's how you're feeling that you've got like this really big space down here with nothing and everything is up here, then it could just be that you're, that's what your face shape is doing. So one thing to try is to look online at like face mapping and where depending on your face shape, you should be placing your product. Another thing to try is that might help you feel like there's a bit less of a blank space is because you don't really wanna put product too far down. You know, if you start putting product lower than your cheeks, like blush, for example, contour, bronzer, you're gonna drag your face down. But it could be that you maybe could do with bronzing your jawline. That's something commonly do. I do it fairly regularly, just a bit of bronzer or contour just on my jawline and just, you know, slightly onto the face here. Try, give that a try. That's just a very simple, quick, easy thing to try and see if that makes you feel like everything kind of marries up a bit better and there's a bit more balance on your face. But it really just sounds like it's a face shape thing and maybe look into, but depending on what your face shape is, whether there's a better placement for you. Really think about where your cheekbones are, where the underneath of your cheekbone is and whether you're applying things too high up or whether something like a bit of a jawline contour slash bronzing might be a little fix for you. Please let us know how you get on. Zosberry says, never getting the wing quite right. Ah! I hear you. I feel you. I see you. We've all been there. We've all been there. Most of us are still there right now. The wing is an absolute little person. Terrible, terrible, annoying little bugbear for most people. Very few people find winged liner easy. It's tricky. You guys know I've been set myself a goal of trying to nail in a corner liner. That's even worse. That's even more of a nightmare, okay? Very, very hard, very, very challenging. The only solution, the best tip I've ever found for myself is just practice, practice, practice. Don't shy away from doing it because you know it's hard. Even if like, say you're in a rush, bad idea to do wings in a rush, that's number one. So you don't wanna do one. 
I do them when I get home. I'll go home, when I've finished the end of the day, no one else has to see me look at me in the face. I'll sit down at my makeup desk and play with makeup, you know, add a wing at the end of the day before I take it all off, so just to get that practice in. I think it's really, I think we over complicate it, that's number one. Half the time, I will do like a half decent wing, and then I'll try to like make it perfect, and it goes to hell. So I think the first thing is, is that a decent wing is a decent wing. It doesn't need to be perfect. Most of the time, there's no such thing. Most of the time, no one's getting close enough to see that it's not perfect. So I think we should like accept a half decent wing over a perfect one most of the time. Perfecting a wing, I feel like most of the time is a mistake. It just gets worse. 99% of the time. But I think unfortunately it's one of those things, it's just really, really hard for the vast majority of us. Practice will make it slightly better. Over time, you'll get more confident with it. Finding a liner that makes your life easier. I love the KVD Beauty one. That makes it the easiest it is for me. The other thing to try is doing it with a really precise brush and using eyeshadow, because it's it's just easier and slower to work with. You know, the like the ones that are like a felt tip, it's a panic. It's a panic. You have to do it quick and in a one -er. With eyeshadow, you can kind of afford to be a bit more slow and methodical and careful as you're doing it. And it's less disastrous, easier to clean up and blend away if it all goes to hell. So those are a few little tips that I've learned. Eleni says, every powder makes my expression lines around my eyes look dry. Here's my question. Every powder makes that area look dry. Why, why, why use powder? That's my question. We don't have to, I feel like certain like sectors of YouTube beauty creators made us feel like everybody had to set everything every time you do your makeup all of the time. We have to set our under eye areas. We have to set our foundation. So I like to set my under eye area, but I never set my, well, hardly ever set my foundation. I don't need to have a normal skin type. My foundations wear well enough. I like to keep the glow to my foundation. I'm don't want to set with powder, I don't need to. A lot of you also don't need to, especially if you have a drier skin. Lots of people, especially as we get older and that eye area may be more problematic, more lines there, more texture, maybe drier, don't need to set it. Literally the point of setting is to like keep your concealer in place. So, you know, another option for that is one, get a concealer that actually is self-setting and doesn't need to be set with powder. The Huda Beauty does that really nicely. I've found several, the, you know, the NARS little cream pot will stay set really nicely. They may start to crease throughout the day, but you can literally tap them back in. And if you use a little, really, you're not gonna have much of an issue with creasing if you're just using a tiny amount, but you're probably gonna have a lot less of an issue than you currently are setting with powder and having that real dryness and it really exaggerating your lines. So that's my thing. If something's not working for you, don't do it. That's what I say. So Miranda says, almost all foundations settle in pores and around the nose, even with primer. So that's, there's one of a few things happening here. Have you tried like several different pore filling primers? That's number one, that's what you should be looking for. If you've tried like, you know, the best ones out there, my favorite would be like the MAC, whatever that one's called, I will link it down below. But that's a really great one for like around the nose, those pore, pore filling areas. So try a few different pore filling primers. Make sure you're leaving them enough time before you go in with foundation and then also heavily set that area. So that's, you know, with powder, pressed powder or a loose powder, whichever you prefer, but heavily set that area once you're done with your foundation to stop it sort of continuing to move. Those are a few tips. It could just be that you've got really problematic pores and that might just be something that's gonna be an issue for you. Experiment with primer, with your foundation as well. Leave enough time and heavily set it to stop the foundation moving once it's, once you're finished with your makeup, it's continuing to move into places that you don't want it to go. Set that bad boy. Mahira says, I have pigmented eyelids. Do I color correct slash concealer and then apply eyeshadow? So there's a few options. You could color correct if they're super pigmented and you feel like it's still showing through if you just use a normal like, eyeshadow primer or concealer. I like to use, to prime my eyes for makeup, I like to use the NARS pot, pat, pot, soft matte, 
pot concealer it's really full coverage it's really creamy and that for me covers all discoloration everything I've ever dreamed of or imagined was there to the nth degree and then I set that with a light dusting of powder and then I go in with my eyeshadow I also can use like the Urban Decay primer potion I don't have a lot of discoloration on my eyes it's typically like in the corner I have some darkness and on my lid I have a bit of redness but it's easily cancelled out with the eyeshadow primer if yours isn't and you've tried using a sort of more full coverage concealer to prime your eyes and it's still showing through by all means give a color corrector a try in that case you would want to tap on like a really thin layer of that let that set down and then go in with either your concealer or your eyeshadow primer so yeah give that a go Preyusha says, I love highlighter, but as soon as I apply it, my under eyes look instantly darker. This is a brand new one for me. I've never heard this before. Where, where are you applying the highlighter where this is happening? Are you applying it to your cheeks? Maybe is it coming too high up? Are you applying it too close to the eyes? Is it coming into this area? Try and keep it further back on your face like higher up on your cheekbone and see if that helps if anyone else has had this issue please let us know in the comment section if you know the solution to this if you know what's going on here if you've had this problem please let us know because i have never heard this one before this is a brand new one so let's try and help prayosha out if you if you know about this because i don't know about this okay I have no, I, this is brand new information. Laura Fellon says her eyeshadow is creasing and she's tried almost every primer. So if you've tried almost every primer, it sounds like you've done a bit of exploration for the nation into the, the good, the bad, the best ones to try. Sounds like you've probably done already a bit of research in that area. Have you tried concealer and setting that with powder? That's a different option. Also, which eyeshadows are you using? Because all eyeshadow was not created equally. There are eyeshadows that are more prone to creasing and others that are not. So that's number one. What type of eyeshadows are you using? Powders, again, less likely to crease than creams or liquids. Less is more. If we're trying to avoid creasing of anything, concealer, eyeshadow, whatever it is, less is more. Use less, tap it in, press it into the skin, maybe use a finger instead of a brush, and less is more. The more product there is, the more there is to crease and to like overwhelm the lines or the creases in our eyes. So less is more, try using a concealer instead, see if that helps, less is more, give that a go. Really blend and really press it in and work it into the lid rather than just sort of tapping it on top, try that. Number four, Whitstable says, I am a similar complexion to you and I can never seem to get my bronzer to show up. So I, I don't have a problem with bronzer showing up at all. So my first question, if you're similar complexion to me, what bronzers are you using, what shades? Because I'm like a medium skin tone in the winter. And so I can't use like the lightest shade of bronzers. That would be too light for me. So for the Charlotte Tilbury, I use the shade tan. I think that's either the third or fourth shade. Same shade, Gucci bronzer, I use the shade tan. So you do need to use a bronzer that's not like the lightest shade. Some bronzers from some brands, if they only have one bronzer, Chanel is a classic, you may struggle to get those to show up if there's just one shade, because typically if there's one shade of bronzer, for a lot of brands, it's aimed at like a light medium skin tone. So that may be a little too light. So yeah, think about which, which shades you're using, which brands have really good bronzer shade ranges with a deeper option than like the light medium skin tone. Charlotte Tilbury and Gucci, I don't have any issues with those. Also, maybe the, br the brush that you're using is it maybe not picking up enough product. So have a look at the brush you're using. Uh, I recommend the Sony G bronzer brushes. They are the best of the best. But yeah, strange one. But yeah, I'd be really interested to know which bronzers you've tried and which shades, whether you need to just look at getting something that's a bit richer. Next up, Anfisma. Anfisma, I, I know I'm saying that wrong, so I'm so sorry. Best cool toned quad or quint? 
I would currently recommend Bronze Bliss from Pat McGrath's holiday collection. It's just simple but effective, beautiful cool tones in here. It's got everything you need, you know, it's got a matte, it's got a range of lovely, beautiful, cooler toned shimmers. It has got a little bit of warmth in, you know, a couple of those shimmers, but overall it's a gorgeous cool toned quad with a fair amount actually of variety as far as what you can do with the looks light and shade night and day it's a beautiful effective really nice price point quint i am really really happy with this one beautiful holiday release for me and a great price point for pat mcgrath go wrong so sunlight at midnight lovely love the name best way to store sonia g makeup brushes and the best way to care for them so i see sonia has an amazing like article blog post about how to take care of her brushes i would highly recommend reading that for like more detailed info than i've got time to give you here today and more specifics about how she cares and how she recommends caring and storing for her brushes i will link that in my description box for you. But I'll tell you what I do and what I like to do. So the best way to store these brushes, which isn't how I do it, is like lying down in a drawer. That's the safest, best way. However, you have to have the space for that. And that's just not really what works for me and how I want my brushes. So I have my brushes in containers on my vanity. They're all out and they are just sit in the little brush holder. Now I always make sure that these have like a base. So they're not like plastic or metal and the base, they have like a cloth or a material just so that the bottom of the brush isn't getting constantly like slammed or knocked into something hard because that will like scratch or chip it. As far as washing them, I use the Sonia G cloth. This is like the towel to spot clean my brushes. So after every use, I mean, look at the state of it. Um, I will just take off the excess of any product that's on there and that will take off any sort of oils build up or product build up in between use. So I'm always spot cleaning my brushes, particularly anything with creams, foundation brushes, I take the excess off on this microfiber cloth. Every time I wash this like once a week, this is how filthy it gets throughout the week, but it washes really, really nicely. I try not to wash the brushes too often because it's like hair, you know, the hair on your head the less often you wash it, the better, but you don't also want to leave them for too long or also that's not good. There's kind of a middle ground there. So with like my foundation brushes, my cream brushes, I probably wash those every like one to two weeks, depending on how much I've used them. So there's that. When it comes to powder brushes, I'll go longer, probably like two, three weeks, even longer. I use a solid brush cleanser that is especially designed to use with makeup brushes rather than like a bacterial soap, which will kill the bacteria, but isn't specially designed to be used on these beautiful bristles. So I like to use a specific soap, like a the Rafa brush cleansing soap is a great one. The Beauty Blender brush soap is also another good one. And I use a silicone pad from Sigma to gently massage the soap in. Make sure that you're using lukewarm water, never hot. And I dry them on a slope down. So you don't want to hang them like this way because then all of the water is like running into the brush. You want to make sure they're either drying on a brush hanger so you can hang them or just at an angle so that any water is like traveling off the brush and not into the handle. So those are kind of my tips on how I take care of mine. There's a lot more information in Sonia's article. So I would highly recommend checking that one out as well. Dupre Sophie says, how do you clean up the eyeshadow fallout after you've already done your face makeup? So here's the, the first thing is prevention better than cure. Always, if you can, do your eyeshadow first. Then it's very, very easy to wipe dust away or just do your makeup over the top and bury it, you know? All good options. However, if for whatever reason you have or have to, or just prefer to do your base makeup first and then your eyeshadow, it is harder then. So you've got a few options. You can use a brush and like dust away. Sometimes I find if it's like specks, they just don't dust away, depending on like the texture of the shadow and how heavy it is, it might just like smear across your face and then you've got like a sparkly under eye area. So another thing to use is like tape, like sellotape and use it over and over again, you know, stick it to your hand, lift it up, stick it to your hand, lift it up until it's barely sticky and then lightly 
press that and that can pick up without sort of smearing them across the particles across your face and getting a glittery cheek area that's another thing to try i've also successfully like applied a bit of powder or taken my beauty blender with you know fairly small amount of product just left over on it and tapped it over the top that can also work a few different things to try but i would always do eyes first and then it's you don't have to worry about it. Nikki says, if you had to go from an office look to a Christmas party look, what four products would you use? So I've done, I did this every year when I worked in the city, when I worked in offices, then, you know, you go straight from the office out to a Christmas party. Maybe you want to add a bit of extra zhuzh. You want to go from day to night. The first thing I would do would be like five more coats of mascara. That's number one, extra bit of mascara. I would also go in, either, even if I was wearing blush in the daytime, I would go in and refresh my blush because it is the thing that kind of fades the quickest from your cheeks. So I would always add blush back in or add a blush for the evening so it's a bit fresher and just like really takes your look from day to night. Of course, a bold lip. That's the easiest, quickest way to go from day to night. If it's a holiday party, especially a red lip, you're instantly holiday party ready. You know, the other thing I would probably do is take a pressed powder like the Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder to just sort of dust anywhere that's become a bit shiny throughout the day, anywhere where you've lost coverage. That is the perfect touch up powder for me. I'll just go, you know, down the nose where it may have been a bit shiny if I'm starting to lose a bit of coverage from around my cheek or my chin and just tap over the top and that's going to fix everything and make it look fresh again and how many is that we've got mascara blush lip powder we've got four another good thing as well though would be to try a setting spray because that's just going to freshen your makeup up and bring everything back to life so maybe the charlotte tilbury spray as well would be a good one so Redo Shabby says, no matter what primer or foundation slash moisturizer combo I use, I always get patchiness on my forehead and I exfoliate. So sounds as though it could be, you say that you're, you know, you've tried different moisturizers, tried different primers, tried different foundations. It could be that although the combination of those products is fine, you're not leaving long enough. Like that patchiness or where makeup won't like attach or it's separating there's an issue happening between products a fight a battle is going on on your face can you believe it so it may be that you know the products you're using if you've checked you know are they are you using a silicone based primer and then a water-based foundation and they're fighting if that's not happening what it may be is you're just not leaving long enough between steps because that's what i found if i go in straight with makeup too soon after my moisturizer my moisturizer is still sitting on my skin it hasn't found its way inside yet so then you're adding primer or you're adding foundation and it's basically mixing together with whatever else is still on your skin spf is a is a real cheeky number when it comes to this because it does take a while to sit in and some spfs you know literally their job is to sit on top of the skin and keep the sun out so a lot of those take a long time to work into the skin or some of them just don't sit very well on the skin with makeup either so make sure you're leaving a long time like at least five minutes longer if you can between skincare and starting off with makeup and the same thing between primer and foundation i always do my primer then i'll do my eyes and by the time i've gone on to my foundation there's probably been 10 minutes between primer and foundation just leave as long as you can in between steps and that may help as more 83 any tips for keeping sunglasses from wearing makeup off my nose i have the best tip for this i saw an amazing tiktok about this and my mind was blown so this is is life-changing what you have to do wait let me get glasses so you take your sunglasses you want loose powder any loose powder will do you want to take a sponge because i think a brush just isn't going to it's going to dust off instead of packing on and you want to take this and press it onto the insides of where the nose piece of your glasses can you see where i'll give you a close-up when i've done let's do the other side and you're just pressing this into the nose piece as much as you can get on there so you can you see the powder just in there on that nose piece hopefully my camera's focusing and you can just see i've covered that with powder 
and then when you put that on it's not going to rub off your foundation <gasps> Is that not the most genius tip you've ever heard in your life? I'm so glad you asked that question because when I saw that tip on TikTok, I thought, oh my goodness, glasses wearing folk need to hear about this. We need to spread the word because it's genius. Kirsty says, how do you prevent bottom hole lipstick? Now, if you don't know what this is, this is when you put on like a this is when you're wearing like a liquid matte lipstick typically and your lips essentially like shrivel up and you get all the sort of lines and every line on your lips is exaggerated and it looks like your lips are shriveled up. That's what's happening. A few ways to prevent it. One, don't wear liquid matte lipsticks. 99.9% .9 of them will do that to some degree. Um, you've got a few options. You could either put some lip balm on before you use one of those lipsticks and that will stop it drying down a little which kind of defeats the purpose of a liquid matte lipstick that you know it's not going to be as transfer proof or as long wearing but it will kind of counteract you know pros and cons the other thing is to put a little bit of gloss over the top of a liquid matte again negates the point of a liquid matte in my opinion but those are your options if you're going to wear liquid matte lipsticks essentially that's going to happen because they just can't help themselves they have to suck all the life out of our lips for some reason roberta doki how to balance foundation for combo skin so combo skin my understanding of combo skin because i don't have it is that you are oily in some areas and dry in other areas so the best thing to do there i think is is skin prep you know use your primer you may need multiple primers for different areas so I know my amazing friend Mel she used the MAC pore filling primer like in the center of her face and then she'd used like something like the Tatcha silk canvas on the perimeters of her face strategically pick your primers pick your poison for the areas that you need and for what you need most people with combo skin like one primer is not going to do everything you need it to do because you're going to need a hydrating primer in some areas and an oil controlling primer in other areas areas so I would do that strategically apply your primers and strategically apply your powder as well you know maybe skip powder on the perimeter of your face but whack it on down the t-zone that would be my advice any more advice for my combo skin lovelies please comment them down below and share your tips as well and lastly but by no means leastly life and stuff 20 asks what is the best primer for smoothing fine lines smoothing in general it's the tom ford soft matte traceless soft matte primer this is my holy grail primer i find it so smoothing it gives me the perfect flawless base for foundation it makes every foundation i wear look smoother and more flattering on lines and texture and sins so yeah it's this one, the answer to all of our prayers. So there you have it. That I think is all we have time for today. I think I got to pretty much every question that was a new question in my makeup dilemma in my makeup dilemmas series. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye 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 bye.